2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, in the fifth verse, Paul says this, For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. The uh, Amplified says it this way, For when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest. We were oppressed in every way and afflicted at every turn, fighting and contentions without dread and fears within us. Now, all of us can relate to this in some way, right? As far as having contention and strife. I mean, especially right now in the culture that we live in, there's so much strife and there's so much contention outside of us. You know, there's a lot of fightings about vaccinations, about masks and should we or shouldn't we? And and, you know, people are at odds and fighting one another over everything and and civic and political issues, freedoms being taken away. So there's a lot of stuff that we can relate to. There's a lot of strife and fightings going outside. And I know I talked about this before with those that were here as far as what the way I approach those things with vaccinations, with masks, you need to be led for the Lord. I'm not against or for it, but I do believe that you need to hear from God before you just start putting anything in your body that you don't know anything about it, really. You don't just want to take a man's word and say, you know, if a man, a doctor, I don't care who it is, says this is good, it's going to help. You don't just take their word as your final word. You go to the word of God you, and you find out from the Holy Spirit, should I do this or should I not do this? But I definitely am not for forcing anything on anyone. None of those things should be forced on us. They should not be forced. You should not be forced to have to wear a mask, forced to have to vaccinate. So, I'm not for or against if people want to do that. If they feel led to do that, hey, that's up to them. And we don't judge a person because they're doing that or if they're if they're not doing it. OK, so I just want I just want those that watch this in the future to know that is where we come from on that is that I'm not going to make anybody and I'm not going to be led for anybody. I'm not going to hear from God for you. You have to hear from God for yourself. But we're not going to judge you one way or the other. What you decide to do with your body, that's your body. But you should have the choice to do that. Amen. And so there's a lot of fears and there's a and there's a lot of things that are going on. And we must remind ourselves that, yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world because it's real easy to let the things of the world get inside of us. You know, we cannot allow the things of the world to get inside of us. We can't just walk around all the time upset, in a rage, mad at what's going on, just always boiling inside of everything, you know, that's going on in our culture around us. We can't do that. I mean, Jesus, you know, he lived in a time where things were going on as well. And I don't think he was just always upset in rage and mad at the things that are going on. Yeah, we have to deal with the things that are going on in the world, but we don't have to let their problems in our hearts. We don't have to let it in us to the point where we're just, we have no peace and we have no rest and no joy at all. But those things happen, right? Those things can happen. There's, there's the, he said that there's the things outside and there was the dread and fear within, you know, Right now, a lot of people are in fear. They're scared of what's going to happen. You know, I know there was a, I guess the news is always saying there's a, I don't even watch that news anymore, but, but they're always talking about an uptick in cases. You know, I was talking to a family relative just the other day that doesn't live in Florida. They're like, oh my, I heard everything is horrible in Florida. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Everything is fine here. Like, don't believe that lying media. Turn that junk off, you know? But, <laughs> but the thing is, is that there are things that can try to get inside of you. I actually talked to one of our partners the other day who's a believer, who's, who, who's uh, uh, you know, believes the same way we do, believes that God is your healer. And he's dealing with COVID. And so we lifted him up and we're standing with him in prayer. But things like that can you hit you and that fear can try to get inside of you. 
And like, wow, that person's a faith person and that person believes this. And then you hear about this person, you know, getting COVID and these per people dying over here that can get in you. And then there's the, well, what's going to happen? Is there going to be, you know, a shutdown? Is, are they going to shut school down again? Am I going to have to do online learning? Am I am I going to lose my job? There's all these things that are trying to work inside of us to cause us to fear. You know, I don't know if you ever had that pressure financial pressure where that's all that's on your mind. That's all you're thinking about is, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to I know we've been there <laughs> a lot of times where you've had pressure just overwhelm you. You know, I remember uh, a story that I heard about an athlete. He was a free agent athlete. And this was during the off season. He didn't have a contract. He didn't have a team that he was signed with. And it was on his mind so much that he was stressed out about it. And he tells that he went to a school function with his daughter. And I forget if, the, 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 if it was like a play. I don't remember what it was, but he was supposed to be engaging with her in some aspect at the school function. But all he could do was check his phone from his, to see if his agent was calling him or texting him or if he was getting emails. He w it was getting close to the season and he had no team that he was with. And he was really concerned about it, like, where am I gonna be living? Am I gonna have any money coming in this year? He was concerned and stressed out about it to the point that all he could do, that, that he didn't even remember anything that happened when he left the school function. He didn't remember what his daughter did, what she said, any conversations that he had, because his mind was so uneasy. He had no rest. You ever been there where you had no rest and you're just so uneasy that your mind is just on one thing, that you leave a place and you don't hardly remember anything that happened? Well, I remember that story. This was like 10 years ago. That stuck with me because there's a lot of life lessons that could you can take from that. I mean, one thing is it's foolish when you are supposed to be with family and, and loved ones and all you're doing is on your phone or now you see like teenagers, they got their earbuds in and they're listening to music, not showing any respect or anything like that. But when you're with your loved ones and stuff, man, those times are precious. When you're with friends and loved ones and family, you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be, you know, doing things that are unnecessary, you know, on social media, playing games on your phone, doing things that are meaningless and pointless, checking all the news updates or what's going on. You're not going to care and even remember that stuff a week later. But those memories, you those will last forever. You'll remember those things if you were engaged and paying attention. Not but if you're distracted and you're thinking about other things and doing other things, you're gonna regret that you missed out on those times. You might have been there physically, but mentally you were checked out, you were somewhere else. And that's, I, I learned that from hearing that story like, wow, that is so true that there's all these distractions are vying for our attention. All these things are vying for our focus and so we miss out on what is important in life. And that's what distractions are meant to do. They're meant to distract you from what is really important and what is necessary. So we don't want to be people that are easily distracted. And it's just it's just foolish. It's just foolish to be so distracted with stuff that's not important. But there are things, though, that will really try to get in you that are legitimate things in the natural that you really will overwhelm you and just, you know, get you so tense and so tight. I remember when we for bought our first house. I don't know, this was, uh, we were 19, 20 years, 20 years ago, actually, or more. But we were so, I, I remember, I don't know if you were, I was so stressed out about the approval process and I don't know why I had a good job, but it was my first house. It was our first house. And I just remember my sitting at work. I was so tense and tight on the keyboard and my eyes were twitching nonstop. 
But I thought, like, what is going on? Why am I so tense and tight? But I, then I started to realize, man, I am stressed. And it was manifesting in that way where I was just tight and tense. You know, I wasn't necessarily shaking, but my eyes were constantly twitching. The muscles, you ever had that? The muscles in your eyes twitching, man. But that's what, that's what you know, when you don't have rest, that's what will happen when you're just so focused on the issue and the problem and the need and the bills and you're so focused on the symptoms and you know what you don't know and what you don't have see but you're not going to get any answers focused on the problem right you're not going to get any answers see any answer looking at the need looking at the problem looking at all the things, you know, the bill, the job that you don't have, you're not going to get any answers that way. Amen. Amen. And we see this, go to Matthew uh, chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. We see a good picture of this. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to you know, worry and stress out about these things because you don't change it, right? You don't, you don't change any of those issues by focusing on them, right? It's like what Jesus said in Matthew 6. Can you even add one hour to your life by worrying? No, you can't. But the enemy is good at causing us to be distracted. He is the master of distractions. He knows what distracts us and doesn't distract us. But in Matthew chapter 14, this is right after the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fish. And Matthew 14, it says this, starting in verse 22, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him into the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So he's in the mountain. The ship is already in the sea. They're already in the sea. And there's already wind and waves. You see that? And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come unto you on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him and said unto him, "O you of little faith. Wherefore did you doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. So you notice that Peter was walking on the water as long as his eyes and his focus were on Jesus. Right. But the moment he got his eyes off of Jesus, the moment he got his eyes on the wind and on the waves, what happened? He began to sink. And this is this story is such a good graphic illustration of what we face in our everyday lives. You know, think about this. They were it was already a storm. There was already the the wind and the waves before he got out, before he stepped out by faith. And this is like us today. We we live in a chaotic world, right? We live in a world where there's a lot of ungodly people that aren't trying to live right. And there's a lot of issues that we can face in our life. Our life. There's there's things that would try to arise financially, health issues, relationship issues. So there's a lot of stuff that we will face in this life. But We go to church on Sunday, we hear the word of God, our faith is encouraged, our faith is inspired, and we decide, man, I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand on the word of God. And so we begin to walk by faith, and we're doing good. 
We're doing good. We're walking by faith in the midst of all our problems that we're that we're having to face in the midst of the circumstances, in the midst of maybe some health challenges. We're walking by faith. We're doing good. But then the enemy brings thoughts that try to distract us. He, he, he brings things that we focus on that cause us to get our eyes off of Jesus and to get our eyes on the situation, to get our eyes on the problems. And we begin to doubt and waver. Actually, when, when Peter, when Jesus said to Peter, oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? That word doubt actually means, the Greek word is distazo, which is uh, in the vines, it says to stand in two ways, implying uncertainty, which way to take. So what does that mean? Uncertain about which way to take. That means we have division, right? We have division. We're looking at two possible ways. We're focused on two different things, two different ways. Instead of looking and focusing on the way, instead of focusing on the way of faith and the way of, you know, looking at the word of God, we're focused on something else. And when we begin to focus on something else, we're focused on whatever. It could be the need. It could be the symptoms that we're facing. And these things can be challenging. It's real, right? When you're facing a, a financial situation, that can be some of the worst pressure, uh, you know, is financial pressure is when you, you don't know where it's going to come from and things are due and things are mounting up. And that can be some of the worst pressure. And you can be focusing on that and looking at that. But what does that do? That causes you just to sink and to go down. And so we have this division, this two visions working against us. And then we begin to, you know, your problems will talk to you, right? <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys knew that, but your problems will talk to you. Your problems will, you know, say you're crazy. How are you going to do this? How are you going to make it? You, you, know, you need to go to the doctor. You're not going to get healed from this. You're not going to be able to pay this off. You know, I've had that happen where I've been walking by faith and in the midst of problems, in the midst of some challenging situations, we've been walking by faith. I'm doing good. And then the problems begin to talk to me and say, you're crazy. You're nuts. You're, this is foolish. You, this is not going to work. And you know, this is, can't work out. This has never happened for anybody. And what happened? I, I listened to that and I begin to sink. But thank God that we do not have to be helpless victims to our circumstances and to the problems and to the needs. We don't have to be helpless circumstances. Go to Hebrews chapter four, please. Hebrews chapter four. There's something that we can do that the Lord has given us the ability to do. And in Hebrews four, starting in verse one, we'll start in verse one. It says this, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the word of God doesn't profit, right? You can, if it's not mixed with faith, you can hear the word of God, but if you don't mix faith with it, if you don't actually step out and do what you just heard, it's not going to profit. And this is what, it, this is talking about that first generation of Israelites, okay, that didn't go into the promised land, that didn't go into the rest that God had for them. And it says in verse three, for we which have believed do enter into rest. So is there a rest that we can have today? Is there a rest that I'm not talking about when we get to heaven. Is there a rest that the child of God can walk in and live in today? Is there a foretaste of his presence that we can experience, a foretaste of his peace that we can experience today? You know, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to experience the rest of God and the peace of God. Yeah, we'll, yeah it, it'll be in the full manifestation of it when we get there. 
but we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to experience a full or or, or taste of the rest of God. We're supposed to live in the rest of God. It says, and I'm going to just give some references to show that we can experience this today. In Psalms 37, 7, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. So there's a rest. Even when you're tempted to fret, even when there's wickedness around you and evil people are doing bad things, you can rest in the Lord. You can be at peace in the Lord. Now this, you know, when we talk about these things, I think the church has gotten off onto one ditch. Uh, you know, I'm all, I, I believe in walking by faith, living a life of peace, but that doesn't mean that we have an escapism mentality. We still live in this earth. I believe we still, just like we believe that God provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory, right? You still have to walk that out by faith. You have to do something in the natural. You have to work. You, and you want to Obviously, it's good to hear from God where you should work, what you should do, get direction from the Lord. But there's still something natural you should do, you know. And when it comes to civic things, I believe that the church should be engaged civically. But I don't believe that we should allow it to consume us to the point where we have no peace and we're not trusting the Lord in the, anymore. We should be engaged in the issues that are going on in our culture. We should be getting involved in civic things and, in, and what's going on in our kids' schools and all these things in government. But we don't let it uh, consume us to the point where we have no peace and rest inside. Amen? We, we, we still remember these things are temporary, right? This is not, and that's why so many people are angry and upset and have no peace, because all that they have is this life down here. And so they need control and they need power because that's all they know. That's all that they can look forward to in this life. But we that's not all we have. But at the same time, there's a balance with these things. At the same time, we want our children to have a good future while we're still living on this earth. And so we need to do what we need to do naturally to ensure We get involved. We vote. We do what we have to do. We take stands wherever we need to. Amen. But Psalm 16, 9 says, therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. See, there is an expectation We're we're expecting from God. And because of that, we're at rest. And when you're in rest inside, it is going to affect you outwardly. You're not going to have the eyeballs twitching and the tenseness that was once there when you're truly resting in the Lord. And then Psalms 116, 7, return unto thy rest, O my soul. See, you have to tell your soul sometimes you need to be at rest. And it says, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. So return unto your soul, O you return into your rest. Oh, my soul. We need to tell each other, tell each other that, tell ourselves that, hey, you get in that rest. Remind yourself. Sometimes you have to look in the mirror. No, what am I doing? And you need to say peace be unto you. Amen. But back to Hebrews in four, uh, we'll start with verse six again. It says, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. So because of unbelief, because of no faith, they didn't enter into the rest that God had prepared for them. Drop down to verse nine. It says, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So you're relying on the Lord. You're trusting in the Lord. You're counting on him. You're not straining and trying to cause the word of God to come to pass in your own efforts and in your own strength. That's not up to us. We're just counting on him. We're relying on him. We're trusting in him. And so, but there is an effort and the effort is staying in faith. The effort is fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. 
in Hebrews 4.12, you can drop down to there. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and it is and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, this is where the effort comes in. This is where the fight comes in is with the word of God to stay in that rest. So the thoughts are coming. The, 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 the circumstances are all in your face. The symptoms are right there. This is where the word of God comes in. This is where the fight comes in. And you take the word of God and you pierce those thoughts. You defeat those thoughts with the word of God. You know, one of the things that the Lord has showed me is that the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us hold fast to the profession or confession of our faith, for he is faithful that promise. One of the ways that you actually move forward in the things of God and move forward in his word is by looking back at what he has already said and what he's already done for you. You move. If you remember in Genesis, it talks about Sarah. And that at first she laughed when she heard that she was going to have a child. But then she got in faith and she got in faith. How? It says because she considered him faithful that promised to consider somebody faithful. That means they have to have a record, right? You have to go back and look at their record. You know what I mean by that? Their record, their uh, their history. Yeah, thank you. They, you have to go back and look at their history and you have to remember have they been faithful before? Have they come through before? In order to call somebody faithful, you can't say, hey, yeah, that individual is a faithful person. Well, yeah, tell, tell me how. Well, I, I don't know. I just met him, but I, I know he's faithful. No, there's some history that you have to look back on. There's a, a record of them. They, they've been there when they said they were going to be there. They did what they said they were going to do. They came through when they said they were going to come through. And that's what we need to do with God. When we're walking by faith and we're endeavoring to obey God and take him at his word and do what he said to do. Sometimes it's going to seem like you're on, you know, the waves and you're rocking back and forth and it feels like you're going to sink. But if you look back at the faithfulness of God, if you look back at his record and the things that he's done for you and the ways that he's come through and you recount them and you put them in your mouth and say, no, I remember, you know, five years ago when I was in this situation and it looked like I was going under, the Lord came through for us and he's going to do it again. I remember when I was dealing with this sickness and that disease, the Lord healed me miraculously. He did and he did it then he can do it again. And so we look back at the faithfulness of God. And when you look back at the faithfulness of God, it actually causes you to keep moving forward. So in order, it's, it's really like to move forward with God, you have to look back at his faithfulness. And, and in this situation with Peter that we read about, if he would have looked back and remembered and kept his eyes on what Jesus said, Jesus said, come, Come on and walk on the water. If he would have continued and kept that, he said, come. He said, I can come. I'm coming. I'm walking. And he looked at the way. Nope. He said, come. I can come. I can walk on the water. If he would have kept that in in front of him and focused on that, he would have continued to walk. You know, a lot of us, we're we're already walking by faith when it comes to a lot of different things. When it comes to COVID, a lot of us are walking by faith, right? We're walking by faith. But then what happens? You get a call from someone. They got that, you know, a close relative, they got COVID or, 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 you know, people around you that, you know, or you hear something on the news and the enemy tries to distract you and say, man, OK, no, but you're already walking by faith. You're the Lord has already sustained you all this time. The Lord has already kept you all this time. So just keep your eyes on that. No, the Lord said he's my healer. The Lord said that no plague shall come near my dwelling, though a thousand may fall out of my side. Ten thousand. And you remind yourself of what he's already said. You look back on what he's already said. See, we're already walking by faith in a lot of these areas. But, the, but it's just like Peter. He was already walking on the water when there was a storm, when there was, the, when there was waves, right? When there, everything was boisterous and telling him he couldn't do it. He already did it. And we're doing the same thing, a lot of us. Amen. And so we have to continue to remind ourselves to stay in the rest of God. And that's how you stay in the rest of God is remind yourself what the word says. And this is not about being spiritual. This is not about being 
super spiritual and, you know, you don't have to think, well, I'm not that spiritual. This is all this is, is getting one word from God. It, whatever that word is, this is just getting one word from God and doing that word and acting upon that word and keeping that word in front of you, keeping the word of God, what he said in front of you. Amen. Amen. Just get that word and keep it in front of you. Um, let's uh, I wanted to I'm going to I'm actually going to close. Let's stand up here. Now, that was the shortest message I think I've done. Right. <laughs> Don't be too excited. It's not going to always be like that. Um, but I want I what I wanted to do was take some time to actually get into the rest. Just I just wanted to sing one worship song just to get into the rest, just to put our minds on the things of God. You know, we are not alone. And that's one thing we have to remember that we are not lo- alone here. Jesus said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. And when we are walking by faith and we're endeavoring to do the best we can, remember, he's right there with us. The Lord is right there with us. And if you do begin to sink, remember, the Lord is there. He'll lift you up. He's not just going to let you drown. He's not just going to let you falter. He, and you're endeavoring to please God. He is going to help you. He is going to sustain you. You know, I, I mentioned before that there was times where I was walking by faith and then I did begin to sink because I looked at the problems. I looked at the circumstances. They were talking to me and I listened to them and I began to sink. But then there were times where, where we were walking by faith and it seemed crazy in the natural, but we were so at peace. I was so at peace. I had so much rest inside of me. I was walking by faith and the, then the problems come and they're like, it's not going to work. It's not good. God's not going to come through. And the, the thoughts were coming, but I almost had to check myself like, am I being dumb? Because I'm really not stressed out at all. I'm really not worried at all. And it wasn't me. It was just, that's what the rest of God will do when you get in faith and you you rely on and trusting on the Lord and you get that word from the Lord. You can be such at ease and be at rest that it almost boggles your own mind. You have to ask yourself, like, am I being dumb? And you almost have to ask someone else, like, hey, this is does this seem stupid to you? Well, you may not want to do that, though, because they may say, yeah, that is stupid. <laughs> but if you know you've heard from the Lord. Right. There's been situations where like we should be really worried right now, but we were such at ease and such at rest that it just you can't explain it. It's just the rest of God and it's the peace of God because, you know, hey, he's come through time and time again. And if I fall, hey, he'll pick me up. (laughs) What's the worst that can happen? Right. What's the worst that can happen? He'll pick me right back up. Amen. And he is our shepherd. He's leading us. He's guiding us. And we are not alone in this faith walk. Amen. We hope this message has encouraged you today. For more information on our ministry or to donate, visit onewayministries.net.